All right, welcome back, pilgrims. Good afternoon. We're on our home stretch here in our pilgrimage retreat this weekend. So praise the Lord. Uh, our next speaker is going to be Stephen Austin. He's been researching Maria Valtorta's mystical writings, called formerly called the Poem of the Man God, for seven years, and now it's called the Gospel as Revealed to Me. And I'll have to interject a little bit on here. I had my conversion 30 years ago, and I heard about the books, and I started reading them, and I have to say, out of all the hundreds of books that came my way in the last 30 years, nothing compares with this book, uh, Maria Valtoros. It's just a reality. I'm a third order Dominican. We have Catherine Sienda. Wonderful, incredible stuff. But we're, we're envious as lay Dominicans because uh, she's a third order servant of Mary. It's wonderful. Red Interior Castle by uh, Teresa Avila. You know, the Carmelites have a lot to boast about. But someday, it's, it's amazing how uh, it's like the gospel that, well, I, I won't, I'll let you tell him about that. He's the author. He's the author of Maria Valtorta's book, Life of Christ, which is treasured. I'm sorry, Maria Valtorta is the author of the book, Life of Christ, which is treasured by St. Teresa of Calcutta. <coughs> he will enlighten us with the spiritual talk. Let us give a warm welcome to Stephen Austin. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Stephen Austin. I want to thank Guy Murphy for reaching out to me to invite me to this conference. I also wish to extend my gratitude to Colleen Willard and all those who supported my coming to speak with you today. I'm excited to be here and to tell you about Maria Valtorta. Maria Valtorta was an Italian Catholic mystic who lived from 1897 to 1961. She was famous for her personal holiness and her extensive writings, the most notable of them being the Poem of the Man God, which is now entitled The Gospel as Revealed to Me in the New um, English Edition. This work is similar in some ways to Maria Vergata's Mystical City of God and Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich's writings on the life of Jesus and Mary. However, it is unique in that it surpasses both of these works in its volume, its level of detail, its ability to be scientifically analyzed, and its accuracy even proven by science, and its significance for our times. Many of you attending today have probably heard about Maria Valtorta and her writings at some point. I have quite an interesting story about how I became a researcher and promoter of Maria Valtorta's writings. Seven years ago, I was first against Maria Valtorta and began writing a report about it because my brother was reading her and I was concerned that her work was forbidden by the church or that she was a false mystic. And so, upon investigating Maria Valtorta and considering all the arguments both for and against it with a discerning but open mind, I discovered my initial viewpoint was wrong. I discovered that the evidence shows that her writings are not only free of error in faith and morals, and approved by a tremendous number of high-ranking, very learned, and trustworthy church authorities, but that her writings are extraordinarily beneficial and unlike any other book ever written. I fell in love with Valtorta's writings and became amazed at all the extraordinary features of her writings. I spent hundreds of hours over half a decade learning everything I could about Maria Valtorta and her writings, and compiling, a very, and compiling a very detailed ebook called A Summa and Encyclopedia to Maria Valtorta's Extraordinary Work. In this ebook, I incorporate information from almost every single internet website and printed source about Maria Valtorta and her writings that are available in the English language, as well as many primary sources available in Maria Valtorta's native Italian language. I think it is fair to say that one would not find one would not likely find a more comprehensive, detailed, and honest exposition of Maria Valtorta's writings anywhere else in the English language. I began to realize that her writings are the most accurate, detailed, and powerful revelation about Jesus and Mary's lives ever given to mankind. These writings have absolutely transformed my life. And the tremendous impact these writings have had on the multitude of priests religious and lay faithful 
um, are unlike anything I've ever seen. In February 2014, I had the opportunity to do an interview on a Christian television show in Australia where I was able to describe my personal experiences with Mirabel Torta's writings and how it has transformed my life and the lives of many other people around the world, including what led me to do research on her writings and my findings. In more recent times, in March 2016, uh, Tim Froman and I did a radio show interview with Dr. Chippo about Volporta and her writings on a Catholic radio program in Long Island, New York. During my research endeavors the past half decade, I have had the privilege of meeting and communicating with leading re Volporta researchers and promoters around the world. These people have been an indispensable help and joy to communicate and work with. In 2016, I spoke at an international conference about Maria Valtorta in Italy, and uh, I was able to meet some of the leading researchers of Valtorta from a wide range of countries. During my talk today, I want to introduce you to my free ebook, the research I have done, and make known to how you can access it so that you can read it and share with others who might be interested. It's completely free and available at many places online. I also want to introduce you to my latest book that is printed in paperback and in ebook format and is sold on Amazon. Um, it's a book I co-authored with Father Anthony Pallari. This book is entitled Mirable Torto's Life of Christ, treasured by Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Blessed Gabriel Allegra, and Blessed Maria Inez Teresa Arias. In this book, we discuss how these famous Catholics have treasured and promoted Valtorta's writings and share what they have written or spoken about her work. Our book also addresses common objections against Valtorta's work. It gives the history of the Index of Forbidden Books, explains the current juridic and moral status of the Index of Forbidden Books after its abrogation by Pope Paul VI in 1966, and includes a case study analyzing and explaining the canonical status of this major work of Maria Valtorta. But before I talk about that book, I want to backtrack to my ebook. The goal of my ebook is to provide people with comprehensive information about Maria Valtorta and her writings, and to spread her writings to people around the world. My ebook has been downloaded by thousands and possibly tens of thousands around the world, not only in English speaking countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand, but I have heard feedback from people in countries up from just about every continent and geographical region. English is the third most spoken language in the world and the world's most common second language. So my ebook is accessible to a tremendous number of people in the world population. You're lucky in that you all speak English, but when I was speaking in Italy, most of the people um, did not. So. The ebook contains a translation of many primary source testimonies that were previously not available in English that are essential in making known key information about Valtorta to, the, to people around the world, including many testimonies available in the Valtorta publishers' books and magazines, as well as translation of relevant Father Virgin footnotes that are available only in the Italian edition of Valtorta's work. Many of these footnotes address and clarify important passages that people have concerns about. I'd like, I want to briefly outline the chapters in my ebook so you can see what is available. Because there are 49 sub-chapters, I will not have time today to present information about each of the chapters, but I can present information about each of the um, 13 main chapters. Up until recently, the English translations of Valtori's <coughs> primary work has been called the Poem of the Man God. But in starting in about 2012, the New English edition is now called The Gospel is Revealed to Me. So in this talk and in my ebook, I refer to the two titles interchangeably. They're the same book, just two different editions. So the first chapter of my ebook is an introduction to the poem of the man God. In this chapter, I, I cover the history of Mary with her and her work, where to buy and sample her book online and provide helpful information about the two English editions of her work. I also give information about the Volporta app, which is available for iPhones and Androids and tablets, and provide authoritative testimonies about her work, which are particularly well suited in introducing new readers to her work. The second chapter of my ebook is called, Why Bother with the Poem of the Man God? What's so special about it? 
In this chapter, I answer these questions, as well as describe 22 unique and extraordinary features of Miracle Turtles Revelations. The next chapter is entitled, Regarding Private Revelation. In this chapter, I, I discuss the church teaching on private revelation, including how it relates to Valtorta's private revelation. I provide a detailed analysis of Valtorta's and her writings according to criteria that the church has laid out for assessing such things. And I explain why we should not ignore her private revelation. One of the biggest chapters in my ebook and one of, one of the most exciting is Proofs of the Divine Origin of the Poem of the Man God. There are 12 sub-chapters of different proofs that show evidence of why Miracle Torda in her work, why Miracle Torda's work must have been influenced by a supernatural source. These include proofs from a broad range of scientific, historical, circumstantial, and spiritual factors. The next chapter is entitled How to Heal in Maria Valtorta. It describes his testimony of a spiritual body of Padre Pio, that he commanded one of his spiritual children to read Valtorta's work, as well as describes the evidence and testimonies of numerous mystical experiences that occurred between Padre Pio and Maria Valtorta when they were both alive. Keep in mind, they both lived in Italy at the same time, and she describes some, um, some mystical experiences where she saw him and communicated with him. And, the, and um, there's a written testimony of somebody who visited Padre Pio specifically to, to ask for the healing of Maria Valtorta, and Padre Pio um, said, I cannot heal her. All I can do is offer prayers for her souls because she offered um, herself up as a victim soul to help save others. So he couldn't heal her because she would just make her offering all over again and undo the healing. It's part of her mission. The next chapter is entitled, The Position of the Popes, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith and the Vatican newspaper on the home of the man God. It includes full information about these things, and it also includes a timeline of significant historical events and approvals related to the canonical status of her miracle toward his work. The next chapter is testimonies and contains a list of important persons who have approved and endorsed miracle toward his work, including bishops, doctors of theology, divinity, and canon law, Saints, blessed, venerables, and servants of God, university professors, and noteworthy lay faithful. The next chapter is entitled Critics and Arguments Against the Poem, the poem of the Man God and Answers to These Arguments. This addresses, and, this addresses and refutes all of the arguments commonly brought up against Miracle Torta's work, including the placement of the first edition of her work on the Index of Forbidden Books, quotes that are taken out of context and a plethora of other arguments and objections. This chapter also contains refutations or links to refutations of all the major anti Valtorta articles in the English language. I have personally written over 450 total pages of analysis and refutations of six major anti Valtorta articles and provide links to refutations of nine other major anti Valtorta articles written by others. The next chapter is, How does the Poem of the Man God compare to the revelations of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich and Venerable Mary Bredetta's Mystical City of God? This will be discussed in further detail later in this talk. The next two chapters are the seven reasons for the Poem of the Man God as explained by a dictation given in the poem, and Maria Valtorta's detailed description of Jesus, what he looked like, and the effect that his divine countenance had on his contemporaries. The twelfth chapter is additional resources and reading on the, on the poem of the man God and Maria Valtorta. In this chapter, I provide information about the best resources for our folder's work, including atlases, indexes, scripture Valtorta cross-references, chapter summaries, travel guides, date timeline guides, and more. I also discuss website resources on Maria Valtorta and her work, and discuss the other writings of Maria Valtorta that are available, as well as recommended books. I have a chapter discussing Valtorta distributors and resellers, followed by my references chapter. When I began researching Valtorta seven years ago, I found that there was little information available in the English language about the tremendous number of amazing testimonies from renowned theologians and notable personalities regarding Valtorta's work. 
I found maybe a few scattered testimonies here and there, but nothing that was comprehensive or organized into a fully referenced and documented publication. I sought to change that with my ebook and my Motorola websites. I compiled every single testimony of important people that I could find in the English language and in primary sources in Italian and provided references and complete information about each of these testimonies in my ebook. I made lists where I showcased, te showcased te these testimonies by different categories, such as a list of bishops, a list of saints, blessed, and venerables, a list of professors, etc. These lists do not include everyone who could possibly be added to these lists. I only included those clerics and lay faithful that I could personally find so far in publications printed in the English language and a number of publications in Italian. However, even though these lists are not all encompassing and comprehensive, they give a good indication of the massive approval of our work by trustworthy and notable persons. As a result of the findings of my research, I can provide you with the following facts. At least 28 bishops have, appro have approved, endorsed, or praised the poem, bishops representing 11 different countries. <coughs> Those who have approved, endorsed, or praised the poem of the manga include Pope Pius XII, five cardinals, 14 archbishops, 10 regular bishops, 24 extremely learned clerics or doctors of theology, divinity, or canon law, seven members or consultants of the Holy Office and Congregation for the Causes of Saints, seven saints, blessed, venerables, or servants of God, 31 doctors and university professors, and two famous television show hosts and media personalities. Every authentic private revelation in the history of the church has had unique features, graces, and knowledge associated with it. Each mystic, each authentic apparition, each miracle, and each private revelation had a particular purpose and had unique features. So too does Maria Voltorta's private revelations from heaven have a special purpose and unique features. I outlined 22 of these unique features in my ebook. I don't have time today to cover all of them in this speech, so I'll point out 11 of them right now. When it comes to revelation about our Lord's and Our Lady's life, Maria Voltorta stands unique in the history of the great mystics. It is needless to say that Maria Voltorta's revelations are greater than previous revelations in its vast scope and in its, and in its detail. From 1943 to 1951, Voltorta produced over 15,000 handwritten pages and 122 notebooks. Her total writings include a series of almost 700 visions of Jesus' earthly life with Mary, the Apostles, and many of his contemporaries, about 800 dictations from Jesus, and around 300 other revelations from God the Father, the Holy Spirit, Our Lady, and various angels and saints. The poem of the man God, or also called The Gospel is Revealed to Me, is the longest, most vivid, and most true-to-life revelation of our Lord's and Our Lady's lives ever given to the Church, with its almost 4,200 printed pages of visions and descriptions of the Gospel. Approximately 98.5% of all the Gospel passages in the, in the canonical scriptures that relate the lives of Jesus and Mary have been described in unprecedented, unprecedented detail in the Gospel as revealed to me, in, in addition to an abundance of previously unrecorded events. The Gospel writers all combined recorded much of abbreviated accounts of events occurring on only 141 days of Jesus' public ministry, which is approximately 12% of the total days of his public ministry. The Gospels revealed to me contains visions covering approximately 500 days of Jesus' public ministry, which is approximately 42% of the total days of his public ministry. Her work describes in detail 179 miracles Jesus performed, only 30 of which are mentioned in the can canonical Gospels, and it gives 97 parables in full, most of which are pages long, only 39 of which are summarized in the canonical Gospels. The English translation of the Gospels revealed to me contains 647 visions of the life of our Lord and Our Lady in its approximately 4,200 pages, and many experts have verified that it does not contain any significant errors, mix-ups, or mistakes, nor is a single person, place, or thing out of place, even though it, it includes 500-plus personalities, 350-plus named locations, 
950 quotations and references to 40 Old Testament books in Jesus' speeches, a newly proposed chronological arrangement and dating system of the Gospels, and a vast amount of geographical, climatic, agricultural, historical, astronomical, and cartographical information which authorities in these fields have verified the accuracy of with appropriate astonishment. The Gospel as revealed to me resolves many problems in the Gospel accounts which scholars have been struggling with for years, including apparent contradictions between the different Gospel accounts and apparent errors or inconsistencies within the same Gospel account. And it furthermore corrects certain misunderstandings and translation errors that have been, have been perpetuated throughout the centuries. The Gospels revealed to me contains unusually profound knowledge and depth in the theological, exegetical, mystical, and neurological fields, which many world-renowned trustworthy theologians say exceed anything they have ever read. One example is um, Father Gabriel Chini. He's considered to be one of the top two Mariologists in the 20th century. And he said, Miracle Toto's writings um, exceed the sum total of everything I've ever read in my entire life on Mary. And he's written. He has probably a Marian library that's larger than most people in the world, or when he was alive. The Gospel as revealed to me gives an unprecedentedly complete understanding of Jesus' ministry in the Holy Land including knowledge of Jesus of the cycles of his travels in the different regions, detailed knowledge about the hundreds of the cities, villages, and geographical sites in Palestine he visited, maps that accurately account for each place he visited in the order he actually visited them. The Gospel is revealed to me, gives an, um, gives an unprecedented insight into Jesus and Mary and over 500 of Jesus' contemporaries, many previously known and many previously unknown. These contemporaries include people of Jewish, Roman, Greek, Philistine, and Samaritan nationalities. The Gospels revealed to me gives an unprecedented insight into the political, religious, economic, social, and familial situation, as well as the dress of the ancient Jewish, Samaritan, and Roman peoples. While Torda's visions are so accurate and detailed that besides archaeology, scholars are even finding that they are a tremendous sort of aid in the fields of history and ethnology. Even from, even from just the literary point of view, the Gospels were as revealed to me, shines forth as a profound, profoundly entertaining novel worthy of a Shakespeare or a Manzoni. Millions of people read fictional novels just for fun, whether it's Shakespeare or Tolkien's Lord of the Rings or countless other literary options. I dare say that few books can exceed the Gospels revealed to me even for just its literary and entertainment value. This private revelation provides amazing insight into something that we probably would never imagine that we would ever know. Information in the Gospels revealed to me has enabled university professors and ancient calendar specialists to date almost every event in the canonical Gospels down to the year, month, part of the month, and even sometimes the day. In addition to this, its contributions enable a more perfect calendrical understanding of the fulfillment of the 70 week Masonic prophecy of Daniel. I'm close friends with Tom Dubay, who personally corresponded with Professor Van Zandt, who's a um, who's a physicist, or was a physicist, at the University of Purdue, and he published a paper where he said that the astronomical information in Miracle Torta's work cannot be explained by science, and that his only explanation is that, it, that she was influenced by a supernatural source. And this is a leading theoretical physicist at Purdue University who said this. Miracle Torta's visions of Christ's passion, as recorded in the Gospels, revealed to me perfectly matched detailed findings on the miraculous Shroud of Turin that recent modern scientific tests have revealed decades after her writings were published. This is furthermore confirmation that her visions are accurate and come from a divine origin. Furthermore, a dictation in her writings from Jesus foretold something amazing about the Villa Veronica, which Miracle Torta could not have known apart from divine inspiration, and which has been scientifically proven for the first time decades after her death. I personally saw the Villa of Mount Apollo in Italy in 2016, and, and you can see in the display in Italy that 
if you put the Shroud of Turin over the veil of Mauna Paolo, they perfectly match. And many university professors have done complex 3D analysis to prove that they are the image of the same person, and what was done could not have been reproduced by a painter. And our Lord told Valtorto decades before anyone ever bothered to compare the two, the two relics, the veil of Mauna Paolo and the Shroud of Turin, he said that they perfectly matched. And so um, that speaks in her favor among countless other proofs. Blessed Gabriel Lega was a world-renowned biblical scholar, theologian, and missionary priest who loved Valtorto's work, promoted it, believed it was inspired by God. And in my book that is available over there in the book stand, I pull pages and pages and pages of original writings of Blessed Gabriel Lega where he was talking about how fantastic Valtorto's work is and how as a scripture scholar, its insights are beyond anything he's ever read. And here's a, here's a long quote of Blessed Allegra. Comparison with other works, quote, whoever starts off to read the poem of the man God with an honest mind and with commitment can well see for himself the immense distance that exists between the poem and the New Testament Apocrypha, especially the infancy Apocrypha and the Assumption Apocrypha. And you can also notice what distance there is between this work and that of Venerable Anne Catherine Emmerich, Mary of Greta, etc. In the writings of these latter two visionaries, it is impossible not to sense the influence of third persons, an influence which it seems to me must, on the contrary, be absolutely excluded from our own. To be convinced of this, it suffices to make a comparison between the vast and sure doctrine, theological, biblical, geographical, historical, topographical, which crowds every page in the poem and the same material in the other visionary works mentioned above." End quote. The most voluminous, frequently read, and well-known mystics of historical visions of Jesus and Mary's lives include Maria Valtorta, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, the Venerable Mary of Greta, and Teresa Newman. Some of the most frequently asked questions Catholics have when examining such mystics and their revelations are, how are the works of these mystics different? How do you explain the real or apparent contradictions between the writings of these mystics? How historically and scientifically accurate are the written record of the visions and dictations of these mystics? With one's limited time, which mystics' writings should you read, and which writings are the most important in and for times? I did extensive research into all of these questions and discussed them in detail in my ebook in the chapter entitled, How Does Maria Valtorta's Work Compare to the Revelations of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich and Venerable Mary of Regretta's Mystical City of God? This chapter has four subchapters, and the titles of these subchapters are How Maria Valtorta's Revelations and the Transcription of Them into a Written Format Has Been Uniquely Preserved from Error to a Very High Degree and how most other mystics' revelations and their transcription were not preserved from error to the same degree. And when I refer to other mystics, I'm referring to the specific category of those who have written, you could call them historical visions of our Lord's and our Lady's lives, like Mystical City of God, or Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich's writings, etc. The second subchapter is a discussion on real or apparent contradictions between the different mystics. The third one is how Mary Valtorta's revelations are being proven by science to a degree much greater than most, if not all, previous similar mystics of the church. And lastly, how in many respects Mary Valtorta's revelations are greater than most previous mystics' revelations and are especially suited for our time. In the case of Mary Valtorta, I believe that God intended for her visions to be historically accurate, even down to the smallest details. And I believe that God guided and safeguarded the recording of these visions in such a way as to preserve the recording into written format from error to a very high degree. It is significant that Maria Valtorta actually read, read Anne Catherine Emmerich's description of the Passion of Jesus and identified dozens of errors. She also received a dictation from Jesus where he explained to her how Brentano ruined much of the written account of Emmerich's visions. The Vatican actually did an investigation in, during this century into Emmerich's work, and it concluded that 
Brentano, who is the one who wrote down her visions on the paper, introduced a lot of his own personal things into it. So what's important to understand is that Anne Catherine Emmerich was an authentic mystic, but she didn't write down her visions herself. Brentano did. Brentano was a poet. And he took a lot of liberty with just adding a bunch of things from other sources. You know, he had a big library in his, in his, in his uh, book. And so, and he couldn't write it fast enough to record every little detail. So you can understand how there was a lot of error introduced into the written record of Anne Catherine Emmerich's writings, which is why um, Valperta, who was also an authentic mystic, could identify dozens of errors. So these comments of Valtorta are in my ebook, as well as published in Italian in a book of, Mar of Mary Valtorta's works. These comments, well, she'll, write, she'll write in the margin of Anne Catherine Emmerich's work and say, nope, this is wrong, I saw it differently, etc. In the case of Venerable Maria Vergreta, it is well, a well-known fact that her spiritual directors commanded her to burn her first two writings of the mystical city of God, her, her most famous work. And then she was commanded to rewrite her entire work 18 years after she received her original visions. It is significant that Altorto received the dictation from our Lord, where he confirmed that Agreta's third and final work, the one that has actually come down to us in history, for several reasons which he explained, were no, was no longer accurate in the descriptive part, but was corrupted with human elements that made it erroneous, deformed, and essentially ruined many parts. But he said that the part contained an instruction that the Spirit provided, it was still illumined by God, and these teachings remained the same as the original work and were not corrupted. The evidence shows that Mary Toro's revelations stand as the most trustworthy and authoritative when it comes to historical visions of the lives of Jesus and Mary. In fact, I would go so far as to say that Mary Toro's revelations are the standard by which you can measure the degree of accuracy and credibility of the written record of similar historical visions of our Lord's and our Lady's lives, which are attributed to, to other similar mystics. But what is particularly amazing is the incredible correspondence and exact agreement between Valtorta's writings, the things that are undeniably authentic and trustworthy, namely the canonical scriptures of the Holy Bible and the miraculous relics of our Lord, such as the Shadow Turin and Veronica's Veil, each of which have miraculous features um, associated with them in their own right. There are humble, honest souls of goodwill who would embrace Jesus' revelations to Valtorta if they knew that it is permissible for them to read and that, has been, and that it has been declared by trustworthy, competent church authorities to be free from error and faith in morals. Part of my research, ebook, and apostolate work involves defending Valtorta against attacks, falsehoods, misinformation, and ignorance by anti-Valtorta critics and articles so that honest, humble souls of goodwill can know the truth about this revelation and how beneficial it is for their souls. My ebook and the Maria Valtorta's Reduce Group website, of which I'm the webmaster, contains links to refutations of, of, about, of just about every major anti Valtorta article in the English language written by established organizations or important, important persons, priests, or religious orders. Some refutations are written by others and some by myself. As is evident from examining these reputations and analyzing both the article for and the article against, there hasn't been a single serious argument against Mirabal Torda and her writings that hasn't been thoroughly analyzed and refuted by using common sense, proper theological and methodological analysis, or consultation of the readily available extensive writings and scholarly theological footnotes on Valtorda's work written by renowned professors at pontifical universities, doctors of theology, divinity, or canon law, pre-Vatican II consultants to the Holy Office and the Sacred Congregation for the Causes of Saints, and the numerous bishops who have written positively about her work after examining it. In my ebook, I also clear up the controversies regarding the first edition of Altoto's work being placed on the index of forbidden books and go into detail about why it was. I also explain the, canon the present canonical status of her writings and how and why both the pre-Vatican II and post-Vatican II Magisterium have since both explicitly given permission for the Catholic faithful to read her work, and how numerous bishops have given imprimaturs or letters of endorsements to parts for the entirety of her work. 
I'm also answering and refuting all serious objections, both old and new. And then I demonstrate that our work is not only free of error in faith and morals, by referring to these studies that were done, but it's also extraordinarily unique, it's desperately needed in today's world, it's highly beneficial for souls, and is something that is probably an important part of the church renewal in coming decades. I'd now like to discuss the Miracle Torta app, a very successful enterprise to bring Miracle Torta's readings to additional people is the Maria Voltorta app for iPhone, Android, and tablets. This app has been officially endorsed and adopted by the Centro Editoriale Voltortiano, the publisher and worldwide distributor of Maria Voltorta's works. This app is now released internationally with English, Spanish, Italian, and French language editions, with additional languages to also come. I help manage the English content, and other volunteers around the world help manage the other languages. Since its launching about four years ago, the app has been downloaded by almost 10,000 people from over a dozen countries. The main feature of the app is the Sunday Gospels. Every Sunday, this app will automatically download the readings for that day, and it will display the readings from the canonical Gospel for that Sunday, followed by the passage in the Gospel as revealed to me that corresponds to that Gospel reading. There is also an audio feature where you can listen to these readings instead of read them. The Sunday Gospels feature is a great way to get to read the Gospel weekly and get immersed into the world of Alberta's visions. Archbishop Pierre Giacomo de Nicolo said in his homily on October 15, 2011, for the 50th anniversary of Maria Alberta's death in the Basilica of Annunciation of Florence in Italy, quote, the work of Maria Voltorta, which is free from error of doctrine and morals as noted by multiple parties, recognizes for more than half a century a wide and silent circulation among the faithful, translated in about 30 languages, of every social class throughout the world and without any publicity in particular. The grandeur, magnificence, and wisdom of the content has attracted numerous good fruits and conversions. Even people immersed in the whirlwind of life and far from the Christian faith, but nevertheless yearning to get in touch with solid truths, have opened their hearts to the meeting with an absolute, with God love, mm -hmm. and they have found full confirmation of that 2,000 year old teaching of the church. End quote. To download my free ebook, which I've been discussing during this first part of the talk, you can go to www.altorta.org.au and click on the ebook in the nav bar. Or you can just Google my name, Stephen Austin Valtorta, and it'll, it'll come up. I now want, in the second part of my talk, or the end, if you could say, I want to discuss the paperback and Kindle book that Father Pilar and I published in March of this year. This book is entitled, Mirable Toward His Life of Christ, treasured by Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Blessed Gabriel Alega, and Blessed Maria Inez Teresa Arias. In this book, we discover how these famous Catholics treasured and promoted the Miracle Torta's writings and, share what we, and we share what they have written or spoke about our work. Our book also addresses common objections against Valtorta's work. Father Pilar, who co-authored it, is a doctor of canon law and has a doctor of theology. And he deep dives into the whole issue with the Index of Forbidden Books. So it gives the whole history of the Index of Forbidden Books explains the current juridic and moral status of the Index of Forbidden Books after its abrogation by Pope Paul VI in 1966, and includes a case study analyzing and explaining the canonical status of this major work of Maria Valtorta. This is important because a lot of the objections against Valtorta that you read on the internet is that the first edition of her work was put on the Index of Forbidden Books, and for many Catholics, they read that and just stop right there, and they don't consider it further. This book aims to address that in a scientific, proper, um, theological way. This book also details the admiration that these canonized and beatified persons had have publicly expressed concerning Valtorta's work, and that their beatification invites other Catholics to respect and share their opinion concerning Valtorta's work. Like I said, Father Polari co-authored it with me. Um, he's a priest of the Diocese of Plymouth, England, where he is the promoter of justice and chaplain for the uses of decor. He holds degrees in philosophy from the University of Notre Dame, Indiana, sacred theology from a Catholic university in France, 
and Canada from the University of St. Paul and the University of Ottawa, Canada. Of special significance in this book is the inclusion of a signed testimonial letter of Father Leo Masker, who is the National Director of the Pontifical Mission Societies in Austria and a close associate of Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who was canonized in 2016. Uh, Father Leo Masper actually wrote the preface for our book, and he was the personal spiritual director of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. His testimony relates that Mother Teresa carried Miriam Valtorta's poem of the Man God with her in her travels, that Mother Teresa read Valtorta's work, and Mother Teresa explicitly told him to read it. I'd like to read four endorsements of our book written by notable personalities to give you an introduction to what um, we cover in our book and what they thought about how it might benefit people. Uh, Cardinal Thomas Williams is the Archbishop Emeritus of Wellington, New Zealand. He wrote, quote, when in the 1980s I commenced reading the poem of the man God, I was cautioned by overscrupulous well-wishers concerned for my spiritual welfare against reading a book which had been placed on the index of forbidden books. Father Anthony Pallari in Mary Valtorta's Life of Christ has banished for good and all any lingering doubts as to the orthodoxies of her visions and writings." Unquote. John Henry Weston is editor-in-chief and co-father of Lifeside News, which is um, one of the most popular and frequently read um, conservative Catholic news organizations on the internet. internet. He wrote, quote, Father Anthony Pilar and Stephen Austin deserve to be committed for this precious work, which will, God willing, open up for the church the great treasure that is the poem of the man God. While for his great work, like St. Louis de Montfort's precious true devotion to Mary, has been a hidden treasure at times despised and rejected even by those in the church. With the witness of these saints who have profited from Valtorta's incredible insights into the life of Christ, may the whole church awaken to the riches of an intimate knowledge of the life and times of our Lord, unquote. The saints he's referring to are Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Blessed Gabriel Allegra, and Blessed Maria Inez Almerias. Dr. Mark Mirabal is the John Paul II Chair of Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville, and he's the president of the International Marian Association uh, he received a copy of our book and wrote this, quote, Father Pilar and Stephen Austin's text in the poem of the man God makes clear the canonical legitimacy for our faithful Catholics to read and appreciate this great mystical work. The positive spiritual discernment of St. Teresa of Calcutta and other recently declared blessings of the Church testify to its inspiring and authentic contents. The sublime neurological theme of Mary as co-redemptrix with, with and under Jesus, the Divine Redeemer, accurately embodies the best and richest theology of the last millennium. Rather than a threat to scripture reading, the poem makes the superior word of God come alive and move souls to repentance, conversion, and peace. The time has come for the poem of the man God to be universally appreciated as the contemporary mystical classic that it is. Thank you, Father Clark and Stephen Austin, for this outstanding articulation and defense of the pearls of the poem for today. End quote. Monsignor Leo M. Masberg is the National Director of the Pontifical Mission Societies in Austria and a close associate of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I'm going to keep with the preface for our book, which I'm going to read here. Um, but just to give a little bit more background about Father Masberg, he, was, um, he accompanied Mother Teresa of Calcutta on many of her journeys throughout the world. He was present at the occasion of the opening of the new missionaries of charity houses on multiple continents and he preached retreats for Mother Teresa and her sisters all over the world. When Mother Teresa opened her first houses in Moscow and Armenia in 1988, Father Masberg was their spiritual counselor for several months, and through these means was the first official Catholic priest ever to be led back into the Soviet Union, at least officially, publicly, because there were underground priests who were hunted and persecuted, but he was the first public one who was allowed back into the Soviet Union. Um, Father Masberg published a book about Mother Teresa in October 2011 that relates 50 eyewitness stories about her and her life and accomplishments. So Father Pilar and I sent um, our book to Father Masberg. And Father Masberg, if you recall earlier, was the one who signed a testimonial letter saying, when I traveled with Mother Teresa of Calcutta in my travels, I saw her always carrying three books with her, 
One of them is the Bible, one of them is the breviary, and the other one was this other book. And when he asked her, what is this other book? She told him, it's the poem of the man god. And, he, and, then when he, and then when he insisted on asking more about it, she just replied to him, read it. Multiple times. <laughs> and I actually, when I did my, my research earlier on, I actually engaged in an argument with a Catholic reporter because I had, I had referenced um, an organization in France which referred to this story about Mother Teresa and he didn't believe me, and he said, I don't believe it, they're not a, they're not a really well-known Catholic organization, I don't believe it. And I debated with him for a long time, and I copied Father Polari on this email exchange I had with him. And I think that's partly what prompted Father Polari to so aggressively find confirmation. So he actually contacted Father Masberg and wrote to him, corresponded with him, and Father Masberg signed this testimonial where he, he dated it and signed it saying, yes, this did happen, this is what she said. So um, we have proof now. And we sent our book to Father Massburg and he wrote the preface for it. And here's what he wrote, quote, Father Anthony Polaris thesis, and now his publishing with Stephen Austin of this new book, Miracle for His Life of Christ, fills me with great joy. I am grateful not only for the high quality of this academic work with its profound level of research, but also how, for how it contributes to a deeper understanding of God's gifts in troubled times like ours. In early spring 1972, when I had just announced that I was going to the United Kingdom for further studies, an aunt of mine told me she wanted to give me a gift for my time abroad. I immediately hoped for some financial support and was quite disappointed when she instead handed me a box of 10 books the ten volumes of Maria Laporta's poem. As it turned out, these books were much more precious than money because they changed my life and made the foundation for my location to the priesthood. The prayerful daily reading of Maria Laporta's great work was a catechetical formation for a young man like me who is advancing in academic studies but who is ignorant in matters pertaining to his faith. The daily reading of the Bible and the daily prayerful reading of the poem turned out to be a student's retreat and a great gift from God. May these gifts multiply a hundredfold. With my best wishes and God's blessing, Monsignor Vigo and Master. This book is available at this conference and it stands over there at the right um, for $15 if you'd like to purchase it. It's also available on Amazon.com in paperback format or also as an ebook that can be read on Kindle or any sort of other e-reader device. What motivates me to spread Voltorda's writings is the salvation of souls, the glory of God, and the honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary. What have I done so far in my apostolate accomplishments so far, and, and what else do I want to accomplish? So far I've done, I've spoken at two international conferences, one in Italy and one in Aust uh, Australia, and one U.S. conference, which is this one, thanks to Guy Murphy reaching out to me. Thank you. Um, I did a television interview on a Christian uh, television program in Australia and did a radio interview with a Catholic radio station in Long Island, New York. And then I wrote the Sumerian Encyclopedia ebook, which is free and has been downloaded by tens of thousands. And then I'm the webmaster of two Valtorto websites, which we track the number of visitors and we are estimating that we have over 100,000 visits the past several years. Um, and then lastly, we have this new book uh, in paperback and Kindle format, which is available on Amazon and Ingram Sparks. And um, the, this, you can order them in bulk if you want to stock Catholic bookstores um, at a discount, but it's pretty affordable. Um, so, what's next? Well, I need your help with that. If you know anybody who wants somebody to speak at a conference or on a radio show or want me to speak to small groups about what or answer questions, um, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to help spread the word or answer questions in email or, or talk to anybody. So um, I'd appreciate your references in that regards. And then um, if you want to spread information about my book or leave a review on Amazon, that would really help bring awareness to it and help people to trust its credibility because a lot of things online go by reviews nowadays. How many reviews does it have, etc. So, I'm doing all in my power to spread Voltorda's writings to souls around the world, and um, 
I really appreciate your help to spread the word and make people aware of the information that's out there in defense of Alcorta and to bring awareness of its unique features. So, thank you again for the opportunity to speak here today, and may God bless you all. Just chime in one thing at the end. So, his book, this is what it looks like, uh, The Life of Christ, treasured by Mother Teresa. That's the one he has uh, right I had my conversion 30 years ago. I got the book. Absolutely. This was the book that I have to say, I knew what was the one of my one. I knew it was true, but I didn't know who she was. And even though I grew up Catholic, I really did not know who Jesus was. But reading Maria Valtorta's writings, I, can't, I fell in love with Jesus and Mary, and then you fall in love with the Catholic Church, and then even reading the Bible makes more sense. Once you see how it was, then you read the scriptures, you go, oh, I get it. It's, it's a masterpiece, a masterpiece in the new era for our prime time television. They're going to have all these episodes of the, of the uh, Maria Valtorta's, because it's, it's so entertaining, it's so enriching. He pulls you in the story, and when you're done with it, you become part of the story. And that's how amazing these books are. So the actual gospel that revealed to me, that's what they look like. We have uh, some of them available at the Total Years table. We actually put those off on our website. It's the actual Maria Valtorta's writings. There's actually 10 volumes like this. So it's the gospels fleshed out to 10 volumes. It's just absolutely uh, amazing. But we have uh, a couple of announcements by uh, uh, Colleen. So thank you, Steve, because it's great to do the counteract all the Pharisee fake news that want to kind of put a clutch on it. That's exactly what it was. But when you read it for yourself, oh my gosh, is it beautiful. So Colleen, what do you have to tell us? Okay, all right.